Sister ships Ovation and Quantum of the Seas are the largest cruise ships to sail from Australia. They're each filled to the brim with technology and attractions, and in this video I'll give you a few tips on how to make the most out of your time on board. I'm Adrian, the Cruise and Travel Guy. I publish cruise-related videos weekly, and I would appreciate if you could support the channel by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you haven't already seen it, you can watch my Ovation of the Seas walkthrough by clicking the card above or the link below for an in-depth narrated tour. Let's jump straight in. As soon as you've booked a cruise, head to the Royal Caribbean website, register for an account and access your cruise planner. Then download the app to your smartphone or tablet. The cruise planner is the perfect first stop. It's where you can purchase add-ons like drink and dining packages, plus make bookings for onboard services and shore tours, as well as reservations for onboard attractions and shows. This powerful tool lets you plan your cruise before you even step foot on board. Although Royal Caribbean operates with US dollars on board at ships, all pricing that you see in the cruise planner has already been converted to Australian dollars. If your booking came with an onboard credit bonus, you'll see this reflected in your cruise planner and the dollar amount will be shown in Australian dollars converted from the US dollar equivalent. Pricing within the cruise planner can fluctuate throughout the year, both because of Royal Caribbean sales and currency changes. The biggest sales happen around Black Friday and Cyber Monday in late November. It's always a really good idea to keep an eye out for those deals. My recommendation is to keep an eye on your cruise planner throughout the year, even after you've made a purchase. If, for example, a sale starts on the price of drinks packages and you've already bought one, you can cancel that. You will receive a refund and you can rebook at the reduced rate. I also recommend that you take advantage of any available bookings for shows, like Pixels, which is held in 270. There's no cost for these bookings, but it will guarantee you a seat. Within the app, you can also check your boarding pass, review the ship's deck plans, as well as find details about facilities and attractions, as well as their operating hours. You can even view the dining room menus for each day of your cruise. The app also allows you to chat to your traveling companions for free when connected to the ship's Wi-Fi. iFly and the North Star are both popular attractions and bookings are pretty much essential if you do want to guarantee a spot during your cruise. Although both attractions were previously complimentary on Australian sailings, there's now a hybrid booking system in place. On port days, iFly and the North Star can be experienced at no extra cost, while on sea days, you'll have to pay extra. Paid bookings can be made in your cruise planner before the voyage, and these slots can sell out quickly. Complimentary slots are offered on board and can be booked via the Royal Caribbean app as soon as you've connected to the ship's Wi-Fi. Costs can change over time, of course, but as at the time of recording, the cost for the North Star is US $19 per person, but for the money you get an extended version which sees the capsule hang off the side of the ship. The free version is just a vertical up and down movement. iFly is around US $29 per person. An often overlooked perk of sailing with Royal Caribbean is that you are welcome to bring wine or champagne on board with you. Each stateroom is limited to two 750ml bottles and it must be brought on board in your carry-on luggage. The wine or champagne can be consumed in your stateroom or you can take it into one of the public spaces but you will be charged a corkage fee of US $15. Royal Caribbean operates its ships with US dollars as its onboard currency. This is often a pain point for Aussie cruisers as the prices we see don't reflect the actual out-of-pocket expense. Cruise ships are cashless environments and all onboard purchases and charges are recorded against your stateroom. All charges are processed with your CPASS card, which doubles as your room key. Before you board and as part of your online check-in process, you are required to nominate a credit or debit card that will be used to fund all of your onboard spending. It's important to note that you do have the choice of allowing your bank or financial institution to convert the cost from US dollars to Australian dollars, or you can let Royal Caribbean process the conversion. Bear in mind that some credit card providers will charge a currency conversion fee, so it is wise to check your card's rates and fees before you make a decision. Also note that Royal Caribbean may place a hold on funds on your card, and this is normally released soon after the cruise concludes. You can also opt for a cash account, 
And while there's no minimum deposit requirement, you do have a daily spending limit. That is 300 US dollars per day for cruises of six nights or less, and 500 US dollars per day for cruises of seven nights or more. Once that limit has been reached, you'll need to go to the guest services desk to pay off your balance to prevent your CPASS card from being blocked. There's really no getting around the fact that most cruise lines have well and truly moved into the digital era and all to some degree are reliant on an app to complete the passenger experience. Royal Caribbean's app is an important hub both pre-cruise and once on board. Pre-cruise, the app allows you to complete check-in for both yourself and your traveling party. This includes adding identity documentation, completing your onboard spending account and choosing a check-in window. Check-in windows are in place to help manage the flow of people at the terminal, so it's important that you do stick to the window you've selected. In addition, the app will now allow you to complete most of the Muster 2.0 process. Muster is essentially an emergency drill that all guests are required to complete before departure. A result of social distancing requirements, Muster 2.0 eliminates the need for crowds to congregate at their muster station to learn in person about the emergency drill process. Instead, passengers can use their smart device or stateroom television to watch a series of instructional videos about what to do in the event of an emergency. The app or TV will record that you've completed these steps and the last piece of the puzzle is simply to walk to your muster station on boarding day and have your CPASS card scanned by a crew member much better. Additionally, and in place until various government bodies wind back their specific health requirements for the cruise industry, the app is also where you will complete your health declaration within 24 hours of boarding. You are required to complete a self-administered rapid antigen test, plus you'll need to bring time-stamped photographic proof of your negative result with you to the terminal in order to board the ship. Proof of vaccination is also required. Passports are required for all cruises that visit a foreign or international port and six months validity on your passport is required measured from the end date of the cruise. For domestic cruises, that is those that call only at Australian ports or at no ports at all, a government issued photo ID such as a driver's license is accepted. Children aged 17 years and under will require a passport birth certificate or government issued photo ID. Children under 16 years of age who do not have a passport or photo ID must have a copy of their birth certificate or their parent Australian Medicare card. You won't find Australian PowerPoints on board a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Instead, each stateroom offers a selection of both US and European style outlets. European outlets operate at 220 volts, while the US style operate at 120 volts. Some Australian appliances like hair dryers and even electric toothbrush chargers may not work as well as you'd expect if you connect them to US outlets. So I recommend relying on the European outlets for higher consumption appliances. And yes, I recommend you bring your own hair dryer. Power boards, irons and kettles are all banned and these will be confiscated and returned to you at the end of the cruise if you attempt to board with them. For the full list of electrical contraband, you can visit the Royal Caribbean website. There are no self-serve laundries on board Royal Caribbean's cruise ships. You will be limited to using the ship's laundry services or washing items in your cabin. One laundry service to look out for though is called Wash and Fold. It allows you to stuff as many clothing items as you can into a paper laundry bag and all will be returned to you washed and folded for a single set fee. Be aware that some of the items may be returned quite creased so I don't recommend it for your better clothing. The Quantum class sister ships are huge. They're each served by two main stairwell and elevator banks, one located forward and one mid-aft. Although there really isn't a bad location on board, it's more convenient if you can locate yourself near one of these. Most locations are quiet, but if you're directly under the pool deck or public spaces such as the Windjammer, there can sometimes be noise transference down into cabins. Choose a cabin that is sandwiched by other cabin decks to guarantee a quieter experience. For non-smokers, it's important to know that both Quantum and Ovation have a dedicated smoking area on the outer walkway on Deck 5 starboard. I bring this up because there are records of people complaining about smoke drift towards balconies located aft on Deck 6 and 7 that are above the area. Keep that in mind, and if you're particularly sensitive, perhaps choose a cabin on the ship's port side. 
Although anyone familiar with Royal Caribbean will know very well of the Windjammer, there are other often overlooked complimentary dining venues on board. In particular, the Solarium Bistro offers a smaller buffet-style range of both hot and cold foods at breakfast and lunch and can be a lot less frenetic. As it's part of the adults-only Solarium, access is limited to guests aged 16 and over, which also helps with the calmer atmosphere. It's also open for an a la carte dinner during the evening hours, and this can be booked once on board. Additionally, Cafe 270 is another great spot for a quick or casual bite, and it's open from morning until evening, with a range of hot and cold options. There are other complimentary dining venues on board as well, but these are two great options if you're still interested in the buffet experience, but perhaps something that's not quite as busy. American cruise lines such as Royal Caribbean refer to what we call main courses as entrees and what we call entrees as appetizers. So that's something to keep in mind before you get on board. Well, that's it for this video. I'm sure there are plenty other tips and tricks, so feel free to pop them in the comments below and I'm sure others will enjoy reading them. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. And if you are looking to book a cruise, you can head to my website, thecruiseandtravelguide.com.au, where you can search and book a cruise yourself. Plus, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The Cruise and Travel Guy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Sister ships Ovation and Quantum of the Seas are the largest cruise ships to sail from Australia. They're filled to the brim with attractions and stuff. Royal Caribbean operates its ships with US dollars prior. The Quantum class ships are huge. They're each served by a Although anyone familiar with Royal Caribbean will know very well about the Windjammer, there are other options on board Ovation and Quantum of the Seas that are complimentary dining venues. Sounds awful. And what we call entrees, they refer to as appetizers. So that's something to keep in board before you cruise. Keep in mind, not on board.